Good morning, everyone. My name is Josh, for those who haven't seen me before. I'm a hobbyist miner, documenting my journey as I build up my mining farm and my mining operation. And I'm gonna take you along through that journey. In my last video that was literally yesterday, what I did was I rebuilt my two mining rigs on my rack uh, to make it more easily accessible uh, and upgradable when I add my new graphics cards and new power supplies. And right when I finished that video yesterday, I ended up getting another package from UPS. Let me show you guys what I got. Two more of my RTX 3060 Ti Founder Edition cards finally shipped. I got so excited. I, <laughs> I'm getting my graphics cards that I had to remove it from the boxes. They're so beautiful. And they were brand new MSRP. Got really lucky on those. Uh, I am waiting for another shipment of about like 15 or 20 cards, but uh, the backup in California and the freighter, uh, the freighter backup down on the coast is just really slowing down me getting my graphics card, which is kind of annoying, but I'm getting them slowly by slowly, which is, you know, better than nothing. Uh, at least I'm making back a little bit of money. To give you a quick recap of what happened yesterday, I ended up removing one of my old motherboards. This is the MSI B470 Gaming Pro Max, and it was just crashing my rigs a lot uh, for absolutely no reason. It would just shut down in the middle of the night. So what I did was I ended up upgrading that motherboard to a uh, B250 mining motherboard using 12 USB slots instead of PCI ports, which is great. I might be the first uh, mining YouTuber to actually put or use one of these these motherboards. So traditionally the B250 motherboards, they use PCIe slots uh, to plug in 12 graphics cards. But this one, instead of having PCIe slots and using a PCIe adapter, it has the PCIe slots built in as just USBs. Additionally, when I'm working on the rigs, I won't have to worry about accidentally bumping the PCIe adapters out of the, uh, the PCIe slots. These are a lot more secured in place uh, than having traditional PCIe adapters. And more importantly, this motherboard is so small. I love it. I'm not having any trouble with the rig, which is amazing. Um, I've had consistent hashing for the past 24 hours, which is great. Um, no, ri the rigs, none of the rigs uh, crashed on me. I haven't any issues, knock on wood, I guess. Uh, but if, if this motherboard, this motherboard was previously on these two power supplies powering, I think 12 graphics cards. If this rig does crash or freeze up like the previous motherboard, the only thing I can conclude would be this power supply back there is the main problem. So hopefully that wasn't the issue. It was just the motherboard. If not, I have to remove all the cables again and redo that and troubleshoot removing that power supply and using a different one. But as of right now, we're doing pretty well. I can show you guys over here, we are getting really, really good. I'm getting a lot of hash power on my farm right now. 832 uh, mega hash to, it's usually hovering around 830 to 835, which is great. Uh, haven't had any failed shares. I'm having very little scale shares too, which is great. So this is my 3060 rig on the bottom. As you can see, temperatures are really good. I had a really, I got really unlucky when it came to the silicone lottery. Uh, this one's not hashing super well. I might have to pull this out of the rig and troubleshoot it. Cause I don't remember having a 3060 that was hashing this poorly. So I don't know if it's a heating issue. I mean, it shouldn't be cause all these cars are within really good temperatures and my fans aren't blasting, so that's great. So the guest butler is just made up of seven cards right now. A 3060 Ti Foundation card, a 3060 Ti uh, light hash rate, and the rest are just 1060s, 11660 Super, and 11660. This rig is getting a lot more hotter than the other one. Um, you can, s actually you can't really see it here. I think it's just, yeah, I mean, the fans are blasting on this one. Uh, the Gigabyte card doesn't cool itself very well. I might have to replace the thermal pads. Uh, I have had some GPUs lost, but uh, thank God the uh, the hash dog or whatever, the watchdog is able to reboot the system without me worrying about it. So I don't have to think about it too much, which is great. I haven't had the issue yet where my guest butler rig would freeze up and watchdog wouldn't reboot the system, which is great because on the previous motherboard, the rig would freeze and watchdog would not reboot the system, which is really weird. Uh, it's kind of, I'm just having a really hard time with watchdog, but I mean, it did it once or twice and yeah, no, it just rebooted itself. So I think it's good for now, knock on wood. We'll check back in maybe in a couple days, but yeah. So right now game plan, I'm going to be putting these two graphics cards on the guest butler and I gotta get hashing immediately so I can start breaking even as quickly as possible. So seven cards, it's gonna go up to nine cards. Let's get it rolling.
All right, guys. So I have the new 3060 Ti Foundation cards on the red GPU hangers. This is all very temporary because I want to keep this entire rack black. Uh, one thing I will note, uh, the reason why I moved some of the cards around was because this card, this 30, this uh, 1060, this is a EVGA one. It's, I think it's about four years old now. It's a really old architecture, but this card blast is so loud. Uh, um, it puts out so much heat. And I think the reason is because it's not a blower style card. It actually exhausts heat from the back of the card right here. Uh, as you can see that huge heat sink, even though it's got a huge heat sink, it puts out so much heat. It might just be because the uh, thermal paste is like really old and dried out, but that's the reason why I have this card kind of separated out from the rest of the cards. Um, I just noticed this card is barely hanging on. Ooh, let me redo that real quick. And oh, ah, that'll do. Perfect, okay, that was sketchy. All right, but yeah, this is why this card is kind of far out from the rest of the cards. Uh, these other cards are gonna be really close. These are the 1060s. I'm gonna keep the window open to allow for cold air to come in. Um, this card too. So this is the light hash rate uh, 3060 Ti from Gigabyte. It's very, very, I mean, I wouldn't say it's really hot, but the fans, they're at 70% capacity, which is kind of annoying because this room I use for my other business too, and I work in here. So uh, having it on blast is just a little bit louder than the rest of the cards. I will say the 1060s, even though they're not even at 100% blast, they're significantly louder than the newer version cards, which is crazy to me. But I guess that's what happens when you get uh, new technology and quieter fans and better heat dissipation. But yeah, that's why I have it set up like this. Um, I love this motherboard. Just gonna say that right now. So easy just to plug everything in to USB slots over PCIe adapters. I actually ended up buying another one of these motherboards for another mining rig that I have. I might even buy two, I don't really know yet, but I do have one, another one coming in the mail right now. Um, I think I'm gonna keep this one on the bottom though. So this bigger motherboard, uh, it's currently running 10 cards. Reason why I'm not running 11 is because I actually don't have enough PCIe power from these two uh, power supplies. This one has six, PCIe power cables, and this one can only put four. So that's why I'm limited. I know I can put 11 on this car, on, on this motherboard, 11 graphics cards on this motherboard, but I don't have enough PCIe power, but it is what it is. It is what it is. So I'm gonna power it up in three, two, one. No smoke. And the back brand new graphics cards are spinning up, which is great. So don't have the uh, monitor plugged into any of the graphics cards because, you know, the GPU hangers are covering up the HDMI ports, but let's just see. All right, taking a look at Hive, you can see the new rig right here. I'm gonna clear some of these notifications, kind of annoying. It looks like we got the two new graphics cards on here. Perfect, cool. Okay, so I just need to redo the overclocks real quick and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I just put a very general overclock for all of my graphics cards. It's looking like I did a good job. I'll go in and tune it later tonight, but all my 3060 Ti's uh, foundation cards are getting 61 mega hash, 61.5 mega hash approximately. And then obviously the light hash rate gigabyte is getting 43, which is great. I haven't really looked into it yet. I'm gonna do it later tonight or maybe tomorrow when I have more time, but I read that uh, NVMiner put out a new update to unlock, I think 78% of the hashing efficiency of uh, light hash rate cards. So definitely gonna look into that because I could probably get about maybe 45, 47 if the claims are true. Uh, so to be determined, I'll let you guys know about that. But yeah, looking really good. Getting about 226 mega hash on just this rig, even with half the cards, like literally over half the cards uh, being older, generation graphics cards. Like these 1060s are maybe four years old, maybe five years. I, I don't really remember exactly, but let's go over the entire farm. I'm getting about 953 mega hash now. This is great. So I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna show you guys also how my stale shares are looking. So it's not completely updated yet with the new graphics cards. It's gonna take 24 hours to completely update um, my stats, but I'm getting pretty good stale share for the most part. I live in a pretty bad area with a uh, really bad internet. Um, I'm using T-Mobile uh, home 5G internet and I'm only getting roughly one to 2% stale shares, which, you know, isn't the best in the world, but it's better than nothing. I reduced my stale shares significantly by switching over my networking from using USB Wi-Fi dongles on each one of my motherboards to using a ethernet uh, automatic switcher. So this is basically splitting the internet, the ethernet coming from my wall into multiple different networks, which is great. Uh, I think it was about $30 and I think it's gonna save me a lot of money in the long run because 
you don't get paid out as much with the stale shares. I think you get paid half the amount for each stale share you submit. I think that switching over to a hard, hard line uh, networking will probably save me a lot of money in the long run. Something I'm super excited for though, really, really excited for is I have a package coming in uh, for a helium miner. I'll show you guys that uh, when it comes in, I think it should be coming in either today or tomorrow, but I am so excited for that. Uh, based on what I've seen with the network and you know the price of helium, it's extremely profitable. I think I'm gonna break even very, very fast uh, once I get it set up. Uh, I do have a couple of locations where I can put my helium miners. I'm thinking of putting it here, but the problem is there's not a whole lot of helium miners in my area, so the network's really bad. You do make a lot more money when you have uh, nodes spaced out with uh, not too close, but close enough where you can have witnesses um, confirm your shares. But I'll worry about that later. I'm gonna show you guys that. Very, very cool. Stay tuned for that. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yeah, it's a relatively quick video. I just wanted to get the cards up and running immediately and just walk you guys through how I did it. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys soon.